Hi, Bishop Frank Dupre here with another drive-by message. It's been a little while since I've recorded one. As usual, I'm on my way to church and expecting to see a good, a good time in the Lord. But it's November of 2018. It's actually Veterans Day. And in less than one month, in December, I'll be celebrating 49 years of being a born-again Christian. 49 years ago, December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day, I met the Lord Jesus Christ for the first time in my life. And I had gone to church as a kid, but I never really uh, had a relationship with God at all. In fact, when I met the Lord, I had no relationship with God and didn't want one. I wasn't looking for one at all. But he came into my life and he had a plan for my life, just like he has a plan for your life. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah that God knows us when we're in the womb. In fact, before we were in the womb, he knows us. And it says in Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, I know the, the thoughts I have towards you. I, ha I know the plans I have towards you. And it, it goes on to say something like this. Your life is going to be like a weaving. There's going to be all different things woven into it. Some you're going to find are good. Some you're going to feel are bad. But I know what I'm doing. I'm the weaver. And I am putting things together to make your life what I think is going to be best for you. I have plans for you. I know who you are. And because God is good, all of his plans for us are good. And I've been through so many different things in my life. Right now, as of this day, I'm 68 years old. I grew up in the 50s and 60s, influenced by uh, music very, very much as a, as a child, as a boy, as a young man. And so much so that uh, I was a lead singer in a band in high school. We had a great band. Uh, we were we played in many, many different places. And then the band broke up for some reasons. And I went to college and got messed up in, in certain things in college. I was at Woodstock Festival, saw all the great uh, rock and roll bands and singers at the time. Uh, Crosby, Stills and Nash, Jimi Hendrix, so many others. Richie Havens, for those of you who are a fan of his. For those of you who don't know these people, just Google them. But times have changed. Life is different now. This is the year 2018. Uh, in, in 1968, 50 years ago, I graduated high school. And I'm telling you, the world is different today. Very different today. And yeah, you know that's different, but I'm gonna speak in a different sense. I wanna tell you it's different spiritually. The spiritual atmosphere of this world is so bad that it has now completely and totally brought corruption into the political arena here in America. The political arena in America is a complete divide between the left and the right. There are radicals on both sides. Um, personally, it seems to me the left is much more radicalized in, in, in the activities they do. Um, but the conservatives and the liberals and progressives are very different, very different viewpoints for America. And America's political atmosphere has turned and become one that's beginning to allow violence, which is very dangerous, very, very dangerous. And so we need to pray. We need to pray for God to have mercy on America so that we don't end up in a politically violent arena. That would be disastrous. Right now, America is in recovery. And in recovery, it's recovering in the financial sectors, it's recovering in the manufacturing sectors, it's recovering in many different ways, but we need a spiritual recovery. We need a spiritual recovery, a true revival. That's not going to happen unless the leadership of the churches in America begin to think outside the box. They've got to begin to think beyond their four walls. We have churches that have been in the cities, in the towns and villages across the country for 50, 100, 200 years or more, some of them. We have small churches, we have medium, we have mega churches, and yet we have no city in America that's in revival. We might have a church with 10,000 members in a city, and yet the city's not being affected in revival by that church because 
no matter how much good is being done inside the church, there's not enough being done outside the church. We need to get outside the box. We need to be outside the box. Ministers need to ask themselves, how can I unite with other ministers in my region? How can we unite to affect our neighbors, our region? It makes no difference what church people go to when churches are working together because they're supporting each other. We need this. This is vitally important right now. And it starts at the top. Great preachers in the past have said, if the nation is in trouble, the problem started in the pulpit. If, if there's problems in society, the problem began in the pulpit because the pulpit is the place where everything begins. And if the pulpit does not get holy, and if it does not get focused and centered on Jesus and the gospel and reaching out, changing lives, and, it, and if it does not refocus from being self-centered, me-centered, it's no different than the world. It becomes a country club. You've got the big country clubs and you've got the little ones. And that's what the church is today, a country club. And so we need to make changes in our lives. And the way you do it as an ordinary, regular, everyday Christian is you need to pray for your leaders. You need to get a vision for this and then pray for the leaders to get the vision. We need to incubate this vision of unity so that it'll take place. We need to pray for revival. Not a revival in your church, a revival in the nation. That revival could begin anywhere, it makes no difference. It's good for us. Whether it starts in your church, my church, whether it starts someplace else, makes no difference. It's a revival we need in our nation. And so pray for your leaders, pray for revival. Ask the Lord to break the hearts and break the hardness of the hearts of the leadership of the church and the body of Christ. And we need to be careful because again, even the church is polarized. And there's, there's your super spiritual side and then your super conservative side. And so we need to come together in the middle and allow God to work in signs and wonders and in a deeper life and in the outreach life, touching the poor, touching others in our neighborhoods. So that's what I feel we need today. This is just a prophetic message for today, for you and me, for the church in general. I pray God bless you now in Jesus' name. Don't forget, stop by my website, franktopray.com. There's some great teaching on there, some um, videos and, and also things to read. And uh, I, I pray it'll be a blessing to you. God bless you now.